Just a quick heads up before you guys carry on with this review. It is not going to be as in-depth as my other reviews. I thought I'll just quickly talk about these as kind of a buyer's guide so you guys do have an understanding of or what earphones you can go for. I think there is an upcoming sale coming so I've been getting a lot of questions about these and I just want to point you guys in the right uh, direction instead of just commenting to every single comment. I thought you guys could watch this. So here's a brief roundup of the six TWS earphones. At the time of recording this video, some of these earphones are above 6,000 rupees. But why I have labeled this video as best earphones under 6,000 is because every single one of these earphones I have picked up for under 6,000 rupees. And I'm pretty sure that those prices will be more of a reality during all of those sales. So let's jump straight into these earphones with their build. Four of these earphones all have glossy finishes, which is the Realme, the Oppos, the OnePlus and the Nothings. Now the problem with the Nothings is they have scratched up over time. I have had them for about nine months now and the scratches do look kind of terrible. The other earphones are not as old, so they haven't picked up as many scratches, but this is the default setting to happen to any glossy case, unless you look at a matte finish. Now the JBLs do have a matte finish, but they are susceptible to sort of thumbnail scratches, very soft scratches. So when they catch certain angles of light, you can very clearly see those scratches, which is a, it looks like a different coloring uh, after it gets scratched. But when you look at the LG's case, it's a completely different finish compared to the JBL and of all the earphones here today, these are definitely the best quality when it comes to the overall fit and finish. The material is sort of rubbery, it's got a certain amount of grip so it doesn't slip out of your hand very easily and it also translates to the earphones to a certain extent in the sense those specific earphones are a matte kind of color but they are not the rubbery feel that the case is. So because it's a paint, it tends to be a little more slippery than the case and because those earphones are as small as they are, they tend to sometimes feel like they'll slip out of my hand. The JBL earphones have the same finish as the case. So they do have that matte finish. They are easy to grip. They are kind of big and bulky compared to all of the other earphones here, but they are a bit weird to take out of the case if you've got much larger fingers. So I think most of the other cases it's easier to pull out earphones because of the way they're laid out, except for the Realmes. The Realmes I've always had a problem plucking them out of the case. So I just grab onto the silicon tip and extract them from there. The OnePlus Bud Z2 also I find a bit odd to take out of the case, but I suppose once you pick them up, you end up getting used to how to handle them. And of course, the Oppos, I think, are very easy to take out of the case. But the simplest to extract from the case have to be the nothings because it's just a slide out of the case and they're in your hand. Moving on to the features. Now, all of these earphones have their own app access except the Oppos and OnePlus. These are the only two earphones that have access through Hey Melody, which is of course a third party app. But now the Hey Melody app seems sort of customized to individual companies. So uh, they, the Hey Melody app goes way more into detail than it used to as it did in the past. But having said that, the apps that you get along with uh, Nothing, Realme, the JBLs and the LG go way more in depth than the Hey Melody app. So you can really get into these apps and customize these earphones to really make them feel like they're your own. And one interesting thing that I never thought I'd be saying, all of these earphones that range from three and a half thousand up to seven thousand, all come with active noise cancelling. There was a point of time where only really high-end headphones came with this feature, but it's amazing that even the most budget earphones in this comparison have ANC and they work terrifically well. Another really important feature that a lot of people are keen on having with their earphones is multi-device pairing. Ironically, the JBL, Nothing and LG is the most expensive earphones of this lot don't have multi-device pairing in the way that the other earphones have. You can connect multiple devices in the sense, if you connect it to your phone and your iPad and or computer, the only way to shift over to another device is to go into that device's Bluetooth settings and click on the Nothings or the JBLs or the LGs. So you can sync up to four devices except for the LG. Now, LG claims they can sync up to five devices with it. It is multi-device pairing, but not like the other three. The other three in particular, the Oppo, they claim that they can connect to two different devices by pressing and holding one of the earbuds. But I've this has always been a problem for me from day one. I've I've tried it multiple times and it's never really jumped over from first primary device to secondary device and back. It's happened maybe only once. The OnePlus Bud Z2 on the other hand, they do this really marvelously. You can have both your devices on your table with the Bluetooth on. You you just press and hold on the OnePlus Bud Z2 touch area and it skips over. It does take that maybe one and a half or two seconds to register and skip over, but it does it. 
but the best over here i'd say are the realme buds a3 because they connect simultaneously to two devices so there's no question about going into any settings and tapping on that set of earphones or even pressing and holding any touch area this by default will connect to both devices if you choose that option in the app Moving on to the active noise cancelling. Now, it's ironic because one would think that the top end earphones are definitely the best at this, but I'd say all of them are more or less at par, especially when you're sitting in a similar environment with all of them. Uh, I've tried them on in my studio with the fan running. I've tried them on with my window open, so a lot of the traffic noises come in, but I have found that all of them are very similar, except for the lower end ones, in the sense the Realme and the OnePlus I found to be slightly better in the sense they tend to keep out more mid frequencies out while all of them are on their ANC maximum mode. Then again, I think those companies have focused on cutting out more noise. So I think even Realme and uh, OnePlus advertise for cutting up to maybe 40 or 42 decibel levels of, of noise. LG hasn't claimed how much they cut off, uh, neither has JBL. Uh, nothing's also do fairly well, but uh, when you're listening to them back to back in a similar setting, keep in mind active noise cancelling is tuned to cut out droning noises. So if somebody's talking to you or somebody starts clapping, it's not a continuous drone where the AI can figure out and start eliminating that frequency but it's amazing to see that these earphones are doing it slightly better than the higher end ones this is something i noticed when i went down to the noisy road where i do my call quality testing i did expect the lg to have really good anc it does have very good anc in a closed room uh, if you're in your office or somewhere but when i was down at the road uh, it was letting in a lot more noise than the other earphones did at least that's how i remembered it and speaking about that noisy road i'm sure a lot of you do want to know how the call quality is with all of these so I am going to do this the way I normally do. I'm standing near the usual busy street where I do all of these call tests at and this is obviously the ultimate test with the six of these. So today in particular it is really busy over here. It seems to be uh, jammed up with a lot of school buses today. So this should give you an idea of how noisy it is here through the camera audio right now. Uh, there is uh, of course traffic behind me and some construction going on as well. Uh, so what I'll do now is I'll switch over from the camera audio to the Realme Budget 3 right about now. And this will give you a general idea as to how it sounds or handles the frequency of this kind of noise. Uh, in, in the past, it never sounded too great. I think uh, a lot of people have always felt that this is the only real negative which is earphones. Otherwise, they've been really terrific. I've always really enjoyed using these earphones uh, from the way they sound to all their features. Even they do look terrific. Uh, one would think that Realme would have launched uh, uh, a new software date, uh, I think a date in between, uh, shortly after my first review, uh, but uh, it didn't do too much to improve uh, the audio. Uh, so what I'll do now is I'll switch over from this microphone to the Oppo Enco Air 2 Pro right about now. And in the last few uh, tests that I did with these, I think that these did sound a bit clearer than the uh, Realme Buds Air 3. Uh, I, th I think Oppo generally has been more conscious about uh, how their voice calls sound and, and I think it will show maybe in this video, but uh, I don't want to make that assessment. Uh, this demo is of course for you guys to see uh, which earphones you want to pick up and which one is best for your receipt field at the end of the day. So what I'll do now is I'll jump from the Oppo Enco Air 2 Pro to the OnePlus Buds Z2 right about now. And one thing to keep in mind is I have kept all of these earphones on their uh, maximum ANC mode. Uh, I'm not toggling through any of the features. If you want to see that, and if there's a difference in the sound, you can have a look at the in-depth reviews. I think I've done it for all of them, uh, but all of them right now are on the maximum ANC mode too because it is also quite noisy. So I would like some suppression over here. Uh, so anyway, this has been the OnePlus Bud Z2 audio demo, and I'll jump over to the LG Tone XP5 right about now. So these earphones, I I don't know, I get the feeling that they, they weren't the best in the in-depth review compared to some of the other earphones I've used, but we'll find out now uh, when I compare it to the Nothing and the JBL. Uh, from an ANC front, these do, they, they do pretty well. In fact, right now, I'd say they, they're similar to the Realme and OnePlus Bud Z2, but maybe they those two were better slightly at cutting off a lot of these noises. Uh, but but there is a marginal difference. Uh, obviously, they, this is letting in a bit more noise than those two. Uh, but uh, all in all, these have been really fun earphones to use. Um, I, I don't particularly use uh, use these for a lot of calls uh, and whatever else. But from a listening front for music and for movies, these have been terrific fun. Uh, so this has been the audio demo for these. I will now jump over to the Nothing Year Ones 
right about now. And these have been my absolute favorite for the longest time now. The only issue I've ever had with these earphones really is when you use it for call or if you use the low latency mode, it eats into battery like mad. So uh, what is supposed to be three to three and a half hours of uh, usage time for listening time with these, uh, I noticed whenever I was on any long calls, uh, I think the talk time was reduced to maybe one and a half hours, maybe one hour, 20 minutes. Uh, it does pull into a lot of battery because end of the day, you are using the ANC and the ENC uh, AI is running in the background, so it's bound to pull in a lot more battery. Uh, uh, nothing has just launched a new software update that uh, addresses this thing in particular. I have not used these uh, for too long to really know if there is a significant difference. Uh, I suppose in with longer use, maybe for a long-term report, I'd be able to tell whether or not these have improved their battery life uh, for calls. Uh, and uh, now I'll jump over to the JBL 230 NC right about now. And another thing to keep in mind is that I have made sure that all of these earphones are on their latest uh, softwares or firmwares. Uh, I've literally just checked uh, uh, these softwares before I've done this call test. Uh, and another thing to keep in mind with the JBLs in particular, right now while I'm here, this is the only set of earphones that disengages the active noise cancelling for me when I'm on any call. So the ENC is still active for you being the recipient. Uh, but as soon as it detects that you're on a phone call, it switches it off. I suppose it's a safety feature from JBL side. So you know if anybody is coming uh, close to you or honking if you're walking or running. Uh, I suppose it is a neat feature. But I would have liked to have the option of toggling between ANC on or off or having different modes, which, which this does not have. What this does have is a voice aware feature when you're on a phone call, which, uh, well, I didn't realize this was an issue for many people because I've never noticed it until a few of you pointed it out. Uh, the amount you hear yourself on a phone call can be a bit of uh, a disturbance or a bit distracting. So this does have a voice aware feature which you can toggle in the app uh, to let yourself hear your voice a little more or a little less, making your phone calls that much more comfortable. So there you have it. These have been the demos of all six of these earphones. I hope this does give you some clarity to understanding which set of earphones could be for you, especially if you're very particular about those phone calls. And of course, I'll see you back at the studio. to how these sound i sort of categorize the realmes and oppos in a very similar level they are i wouldn't say very similar sounding they've won't they've got their own characteristics to a certain extent but if i were to give it in brief both of these earphones do sound like they don't amp too well and there is something you have to do in the settings to make them sound like they amped better you will see that in my in-depth reviews or in the comparison videos there is something about the oppo that i do prefer over the realme something about it has a much more natural tone and there's there's something about the oppo sound signature that tends to sound so much more soothing on the ears. Talking about the OnePlus Bud Z2, I wouldn't really categorize this set of earphones with any other. They are sort of their own entity. They've been built for a specific group of people, more specifically for bass enthusiasts. There's, it is a very bass happy set of earphones. It's, it's not exactly the most defined. It can get a bit obnoxious at times. This is the one thing that has kept me away from using these as my daily drivers because they can get a little too bass heavy for, for my taste. I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who do like them. But then again, uh, there's one thing to keep in mind with the uh, OnePlus Bud Z2. I did have an issue with these from day one, straight out of the box. There was an issue with the active noise cancelling on these. There was a slight hissing on the right earbud. And I thought this was restricted to a batch uh, that when I bought the earphones originally. But it turns out people are still facing this issue. And I have made a video about how OnePlus did replace my, my earphones. And I think a lot of people are, are coming back to that video and realizing that they've got the same issue. What's decent about OnePlus is that they are honoring the warranty whether you've bought it from OnePlus or whether you've bought it from Amazon or Flipkart. Talking about the nothings, I've had these as my daily drivers for a little over nine months now and I've thoroughly enjoyed these. These have been tuned by none other than Teenage Engineering and they have done a superb job with these. I've enjoyed listening to these through the day or even in the evenings uh, just when I'm winding down for the end of the day. 
uh, they've been thoroughly enjoyable for audio consumption for even video consumption for movies then when it comes to the JBLs and you when you pit them against the nothings I do have a comparison on this again for a more in-depth analysis feel free to watch that video the JBLs tend to shine through a little bit more than the nothings they seem to have a little bit more body uh, where the nothings are lacking they seem to have a little more drive they seem to be a little crisper and they seem to be slightly more enthusiastic imaging is again everything is a slight upgrade compared to the nothings and I refrain from reviewing JBLs for a long time for my own reasons but uh, a lot of people did request that I review them and because of that I did and I'm really happy that I was pushed to do it now moving on to the LGs versus the JBL now obviously these two are the heavy hitters in this buyers guide very honestly speaking the LG straight out of the box aren't really great in fact they sound like they're the most boring set of earphones uh, compared to all of these even with the realme buds air 3 they, they they have a serious amping issue straight out of the box the magic is only when you engage one of the Meridian EQ settings. Now, Meridian has tuned these. Of course, they're a very well-known high-end company in the UK uh, who are only involved in audio and they've absolutely nailed these. So if you are wanting to enjoy these earphones, the only way to really do it is to keep it in one of its Meridian settings. Now, you do have a custom EQ you can work with, but I've noticed in that custom EQ, it, the amping suddenly falls flat again. Uh, yes, you can tweak the EQ with a plus and minus 5 dB uh, increment, but uh, the amping is just eradicated from that. So uh, I usually keep it in the natural setting and I tested it, in fact, in my in-depth review in its natural setting. Uh, and I did a, a slight comparison between the JBL on its flat mode out of the box compared to the LG's on its natural setting. Uh, just to see how, how good it could uh, stand up to the JBL. The, the JBL, I did not put in any EQ setting because it gets too uh, over-exaggerated. So much so, um, uh, your, your mids just start to disappear if you put it uh, on any extreme settings, like if there's a bass boost or a jazz. I, I prefer the natural sound of the JBLs and the LGs when they're in their natural EQ mode they sound their best. So when the LGs are in these EQ modes up against the JBL, your stage is so much more significant. The imaging is slightly better. The richness and crispness of delivery is also slightly better. It's it's like a small upgrade. Uh, the same way the JBL was a slight up over the nothings, the LGs are also a slight up over the JBL. So if you have bought JBLs and you are feeling bad about it, I'd say don't, don't feel too bummed about it because the JBLs are still very nice sounding for what they are. And the another advantage you'll have with the JBLs is battery life. I don't think the LGs will be able to sustain that kind of battery life, especially because they've got much smaller cells in it compared to the JBL. But yeah, I mean, if I were to choose between the two when it comes to their overall sound, I will definitely go for the LGs. So to sum up, all of these earphones have their strengths, some have their weaknesses, but each of these earphones are catered to a different kind of person. So uh, if you're somebody who really wants multi-device pairing and you want it to be seamless, the Realme Buds Air 3 are the ones for you. If you are that same person who wants to be on a call, not too many people have really liked the sound quality of the Realme Buds Air 3. Uh, so you'd have to maybe think about something else. I'd say maybe the OnePlus Buds Z2 because they can uh, switch over to another device when you press and hold the uh, touch area. Uh, I, I won't say the Oppos are good for multi-device pairing because they've never worked well for me so I can't say that they have worked well. Uh, there are other people, I'm sure you'll see some people down in the comments who are uh, not too happy with what I'm saying and saying that it's always worked properly for them. So, I mean, good for you if it's worked for you. Then moving on to the build of all of these. Like I mentioned, the LGs are the absolute superior earphones in this entire range. The the problem with having any glossy case is that it'll scratch up. Now, no doubt having a colored case like the Oppos or the Realme, it won't show scratches as much as the nothings because that's a see-through or a clear case. So, every time I pick it up now, it's not as uh, flamboyant looking as it did when it was new for obvious reasons. It's dulled down a lot, uh, but I, I still do like the design. It's very funky. Nothing has done something very different compared to everybody else. And I can really appreciate uh, that gesture alone. Then on a feature front, all of them are very similar. I think the only thing that really differentiates any set of earphones from the others over here is the fact that the Nothing has a, a slide control for volume up and down and it also has wireless charging. The others don't come with these features at all, but they're all very similar. You can customize your taps and holds and touches to a certain extent. I think the JBLs are the most restricting that way because you have to select in the app which features you want per earbud. So if you select one to be voice assistant and the other to be uh, play pause, uh, you can't control volume. If you switch them to volume, 
then it's locked to volume so you can't uh, sort of play pause or skip next track so it's very restrictive that way and then moving on to the sound as i said all of them are really spectacular in their own price ranges they do what they have to do and they're targeted at certain audiences so if you do watch any of my in-depth videos you will better understand uh, which one is suited for you and when it comes to the call quality uh, i've always put you guys in the recipient seat so i hope that you can decipher which one works out better for you and in your situation you know the kind of noise levels you're dealing with and so on and so forth and you've seen how the ENC works on these. So if you've skipped here and you've missed out on the call quality chapter, uh, please head on back to the call quality chapter and see how each of these earphones sound because it'll help you decide which one works out for you the best. Now, when it comes to their pricing at the time of recording this video, the Realmes are going for 3,999, the Oppos for 3,499, the OnePlus for 4,999, the Nothings for 6,999, the JBLs for 5,999, and the LG is for 7,999. So I do hope this video has helped you in some way or the other understand how these earphones can help you in whichever way and help you understand which one is right for you. And of course, if you do want to know finer details about these earphones, be it the sound, their call quality, their features, you can head on over and watch any of my in-depth videos or even my comparisons. And if you're still here, I'm sure you do like the content on my channel. And if you would like to support it, you know just what to do. And of course, thank you for tuning into Paul's POV for some sound advice.